De regreso aquí en Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network y ahora vamos a hablar de un tema que quizá les sorprenderá porque se trata de bicicletas, eh, aunque no son bicicletas comunes y corrientes, estas son bicicletas eléctricas y como se darán cuenta en la entrevista que realizamos con Scott Balson, el dueño y gerente de la tienda Electric Bicycle Store en Fort Lauderdale, acá en el sur de la Florida, van a ver que hay una conexión directa en, eh, las auto, entre los autos y las bicicletas eléctricas y también se darán cuenta de cómo eh, este concepto de transporte individual eh, es una buena alternativa para hacer, digamos, viajes cortos para ir eh, de casa quizá a una tienda, a alguna, algún centro de trabajo cercano. Así que muy interesante. Vamos a escuchar entonces eh, la entrevista que hicimos esta semana con Scott Balson eh, y el test drive que hicimos en una de estas bicicletas eléctricas. So Scott, uh, thank you very much for uh, having us here at your store and uh, for the test drive on the electric uh, bike. Uh, our show is about cars, but If it has wheels and an engine or a motor, it fits in the show. Well, we like to think of our bikes as hybrids. Exactly. So um, these electric bikes have actually a connection with cars, right? Uh, I understand Lee Iacocca had something to do with the first company, at least, that, that started selling them here in the States. That's true. The brand that we actually rode today, its lineage dates back to the uh, design team that designed the original uh, e-bike for Lee Iacocca when he was with Chrysler. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about it. Um, it. That was like about almost 20 years now, and um, that has evolved, obviously, like in cars. I mean, so what's what's that's the latest thing in a, on an electric bike? Well, the latest thing on an electric bike is, you know, uh, center drive motors that are actually in the pedal crank as opposed to, let's say, the electromagnetic motors that are in the rear wheels. I don't say that they're better or worse. They may actually be more advantageous on hills, but in Florida we don't necessarily have hills. Yeah. Um, other things that are coming are the ability to plug your iPhone into the bike to actually not only charge your iPhone, but to also use your iPhone as the bike's computer. And when I say iPhone, you know, Android as well. Um, LED lights that are being built into the forks of some of these bikes are a great safety addition. Um, new and innovative, uh, you know, pedal assist technologies that really uh, become somewhat intuitive when you begin to pedal, the motor starts, and when you stop pedaling, the motor stops. So kind of like the refrigerator light, you don't really think about it, but the net effect is that yeah. when you're pedaling, it's like walking on a moving sidewalk at the airport. You're still getting exercise, but you're at doing it at a rate of speed that you might not otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so talk a little bit about the, the power, the, the range, uh, the speed of, a, of an electric bike. And I understand there's a lot of laws. <laughs> I wasn't aware of this. Well, actually, the laws are very forgiving to electric bicycles. If it's an electric bicycle, it will still qualify as a regular bicycle under the law, so long as its motor is not more than 750 watts uh, or its speed over 20 miles per hour from, from the motor. Now, there are certain states that can make the federal laws or the federal statutes um, more liberal. For instance, in California, they, they say 1,000 watts. But really, that's because they want to incorporate the fact that there are hills there. We need a little bit more yeah. uh, power so to get the hills. They're trying to help the, the, the user of the bike. Correct. Of the but bike. but the, the bikes themselves will go on average 20 miles an hour. And the average bike will go about 20 miles of uh, distance at about 85% throttle for the average rider weight. Um, some of the bikes have bigger batteries that will take you a little bit further, but on average, uh, about 20 to 25 miles. Yeah, and uh, also, once once the battery once the battery uh, dies. You can still pedal, right? I mean, you're not going to oh, yes. left stranded anywhere. Oh, no, no. These are, in fact, bicycles. They're bicycles first, first and foremost. They have gears. They have 90% uh, of the bikes are all bicycle parts, regular derailleurs, regular uh, brakes. In the case of, you know, bikes with higher end components, as the A to B's feature, you've got uh, expense built into the actual quality of the bicycle. Yeah. And uh, another thing that is uh, interesting is... Uh, Electric cars started a uh, long time ago also, and hybrids and all that. And then people started buying them when uh, gas prices went up, were really, really high. Uh, was that the case with electric uh, bikes? Well, there's no doubt that gas prices definitely allow people uh, to consider whether or not this might be an advantageous purchase for them. Um, but economically, I can tell you that um, people find these bikes to be uh, very, um, gr very good alternatives to the car for a short commute. If you, you know, for instance, when we go to lunch or when we go do a deposit at the bank or when we go do a host of 
you know, a number of small errand activities. I can tell you I can get there and get back a lot faster on an electric yeah. bike than I can in a car because I don't necessarily have to wait in traffic. Um, if you know, there's a, just as an example, if there's a left-hand turn lane and it has you know 12 or 15 cars in it that's only letting three or four cars through each yellow light, you know, as the light changes, I can get off the bike, act as a pedestrian, walk across the crosswalk, and I'm still off and, and on my way. Yeah, one thing that uh, you touch about there, like laws, traffic uh, regulations, all that. Most bikers, I think, don't don't understand that they have to apply, to comply with the law, right? With yeah. everything. Whether you're riding an electric bicycle or if you're riding a regular bicycle, uh, or frankly, if you're riding anything, uh, you could. They, we make the joke, you know, you could be riding a horse, but if you're on a city street, you must obey the laws of traffic, meaning that slower traffic must stay to the right. But what most people don't consider, and this is true, is that if you're on a bike as a cyclist in the road, you're actually entitled to the entire right lane. Yeah. A lot of motorists are impatient with that, so it's a better idea, if you are a cyclist, to occupy the right side of the right lane if there's no bike path. Exactly. Uh, and uh, finally, you don't need a, a, a driver's license like we do with a Vespa or, or, or a, motorcycle, a small motorcycle with an electric bike, right? No, electric bicycles are considered bicycles under the law so long as their motors are not more powerful than a horsepower and so long as the motor itself does not carry or propel the bike and its rider more than 20 miles per hour on its own. Now, there is no law that says how fast you can pedal a bike and with some of the pedal assist bikes you can take that faster. But as long as the motor's not taking over 20 miles an hour, I always like to say no gas, no license, no registration, no, no insurance, no sweat. Yeah, but also be careful because you can get a DUI riding a bike too, right? <laughs> you can get a DUI riding a bike. You can get a DUI riding a horse. As long as you, again, when you're in traffic, understand that the rules of traffic apply to everyone on the road. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for the test drive. It was very enjoyable, and uh, I, I, can, I can feel how some people... Uh, can, can use this as an alternative to a car, and uh, I think it's, it's, it was very cool. Well, A to B did use the, uh, initially when they brought this product out, they did use the slogan that it does replace the car for a short commute, and that is so true. What they didn't say was how much fun it was. Exactly. Oh, one more thing before, we go, because people are going to kill me if I don't ask prices about how much are these uh, electric bikes. Um, quality electric bikes are going to start in approximately the fifteen hundred dollar range, and they'll go up to you know three and four thousand dollars, which is right in line with the pricing of regular quality road bikes. Yeah, and uh, where can people find more about your company and uh, oh, the bikes? Oh, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, they can find us on the web at www.theelectricbicyclestore.com. Um, they can find us on Facebook at Facebook forward slash ebicycles, and they can find our rental program at ebikesondemand.com or at ebikesondemand on Facebook. Thank you very much again, and uh, we're going to maybe take another ride on the electric Terrific. bike. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Bueno, ese fue Scott Balson, el dueño de The Electric Bike Store in Fort Lauderdale. Les recomiendo que vayan al canal de YouTube, Autos eh, Javier Mota en YouTube, para que vean eh, la demostración eh, que tuvimos oportunidad de realizar esta semana en la bicicleta A2B, esta bicicleta eléctrica, que por cierto, no, eh, no lo mencionamos ahí, eh, estas bicicletas eh, legalmente, o sea, para todas o sea, las regulaciones de tránsito en todo el país, son bicicletas, eh, a pesar de que van a 20, 25 millas por hora, por lo cual no requieren una licencia de conducir, no requieren... Eh, nada, una, una chapa ni nada y eh, es una opción que según nos contaba Scott eh, utilizan a las personas que han tenido la desgracia y la imprudencia sobre todo de tomar eh, bebidas alcohólicas y manejar y han sido sorprendidos con lo cual esto les sirve de una de una alternativa para transporte aunque en la mayoría de los estados de Estados Unidos beber y andar en cualquier vehículo de transporte, ya sea un caballo, eso es, eh, constituye un DUI. Así que nadie se debe confiar de eso, pero como les decía, vayan a YouTube Autos Javier Mota para que vean todo la, la, lo relacionado, las imágenes relacionadas a estas bicicletas eléctricas A2B. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.